So thank you for being here. So today we're going to talk about the CIPAS project, which is one uh, project under the LF Energy umbrella. And it's a configuration project. Uh, so uh, just uh, let me present myself first. I'm Morelian Watai. I'm working for RT, the French TSO. Uh, if you don't know what it is, it is the, the entity that is in charge of the transmission of the energy in, in France. And uh, my colleague, uh, Florent Cali, which is a, an IT expert at RT. So a bit of context. Uh, so the grid was the, used to be the same for the last 30 years. It was pretty stable. We had uh, nuclear power plants and uh, the same substation and uh, everything was fine. Uh, but the world is changing and we move uh, toward uh, renewable energy and uh, low carbon impact. So there is uh, more and more renewable energy sources on the grid. And uh, as a TSO, we need to integrate those uh, new sources of energy in our infrastructure. And uh, the, the place to do so is uh, within the substation. This is the key connection point for renewable energy sources. For those who don't know, substation, this is the, the small brain, the, the local brain, where you can connect different energy sources and when you can manage and distribute uh, power. So you have a lot of uh, command and control functions and also high voltage equipments and protections. I'm sorry. Uh, so in the substation, that's where you have the SCADA, so system control uh, data acquisition protection. And as I was saying before, uh, the traditional system was built for stability and longevity uh, to work with nuclear power plants. So basically in each substation in the whole country, it was the same and it was very standardized and nothing changed. But with uh, renewable energy sources and, uh, and uh, solar panel, uh, there are uh, new uh, requirements and it's evolving all the time. So if you, we need to be way more flexible. So we need to move from a traditional approach uh, that you can see on the, on the left with a, a very uh, fixed control and command system that is built to, to stay the same for years to uh, something that is way more flexible. And uh, that's what uh, drive us to uh, virtualization because we needed to benefit from the OT world and also from the IT world to be able to move fast in this new environment. So the, the goal of the, uh, the CIPAS project is to build the, the, the backbone of this new uh, system. So it's to build the RT virtualization platform on which you, we will be able to host all the virtualized uh, critical control system applications. Uh, so let's talk about the platform. Uh, it's not, uh, uh, we don't code anything. Uh, the project is an integration project. Everything already exists uh, from the hypervisor, KVM, uh, preempt RT for, for Linux and real time functions. Pacemaker, Corosync, Ceph, and uh, for uh, the clusterization and OVS for the for the network. So the goal of the project is to allow the user to build a, a real uh, ready-to-run VM cluster. And the other uh, constraint that we have is that uh, in a, in a command and control, it's always multi-vendor. For safety reason, you cannot have, for example protection from one vendor and the main B from the same vendor. So you have always a vendor A and a vendor B. So uh, you, that's what we talk about virtual machine because since you have different vendor, it's easier to have a virtual machine that for example containers because they have to maintain their own environment. Uh, 
So the key requirement for the platform are virtualization, of course, uh, real-time performance, because if we talk about uh, distance protection, so the protection that will uh, protect the, high, the lines, uh, it, it works in real time. So when we talk about real times, the acquisition is around 250 microseconds, and the time of operation is around uh, one millisecond to three milliseconds. You need high availability, of course. If you lose one server, you need to be able to you need to keep uh, to uh, the protection on the system, and uh, you rely a lot on time synchronization. And you also need good networking performances because there are lots of data in a, in a substation. Uh, so now I will let uh, Florent talk more in, in detail about the platform. Yes, let's dive into the, the meat of the project. Once again, uh, everything already exists, and uh, the CPAS uh, strategy is to, to integrate and to provide code to configure everything uh, in, in, uh, very easily. But we are not coding any of the, of the function. We are relying on, on already existing and stable um, software and code. Uh, a, a deployed cluster might look like something like this <coughs> with uh, several hypervisors. You, can, you, you must have an, uh, an uneven number of machines for quorum uh, purposes, but uh, you can have only two hypervisors or three or five or whatever. And you're using uh, Corosync and Pacemaker to do that. Uh, Ceph will be able, will, will give you the opportunity to, to, to replicate data from one machine to another, and the VMs will have their disk stored on uh, the dis distributed, distributed storage. If the VM has to move because of a uh, 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 failover, uh, because of a, um, a problem that need, needs to be moved on the other on the other side, then it will find its uh, data because it's been replicated. So the, basically, the, the technologies we are using. Uh, we're using well, either Yocto or, or Debian, uh, then a, a lot of uh, Ansible because we are using infrastructure as code and we, everything we are scripting to integrate, to integrate those, uh, those bricks is done with uh, Ansible. Uh, we are doing tests and continuous integration with uh, GitHub Actions. This is the, the, this is the out of the box uh, software. In the cluster, we are using, like I said, uh, real-time Linux, KVM, QMU, uh, Corusing, Pacemaker, Ceph, OpenV switch for uh, all the inside networking uh, uh, for, for the VM to be able to communicate with each other and with uh, the outside. So basically, you have a view of, of the technologies we are, we are using and a lot of uh, other out of the box uh, technologies. Open flows, if you want to do some cybersecurity between the VMs, uh, XDP, SIRV, this is for the network performance. Uh, stone it for the cluster stability, uh, other stuff and other uh, custom tools. So we will go get into that a bit later. Uh, let's review the, the, the prerequisite. We need the, the platform to be real-time. Uh, in our case, we chose to use uh, preempt RT. Uh, like many of you know, it's not hard real-time, but it's uh, real-time enough for uh, what we need to do. And uh, it's, uh, it's getting traction, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, getting uh, in the mainline kernel now, almost entirely. <laughs> still, still some things to be done, but uh, it, it's no problem for us to, to, to come to, to patch for the, or to use an already uh, RT kernel like uh, the, the Debian kernel, which is, uh, for which they have a, a real-time version. Uh, then we, we are using the pre, the pre uh, kernel, and then we are using all, all, all sorts of uh, of method to do resource isolation uh, on the CPU, for instance, we use either dedicated cores or we can do isolation via, via, via um, ISO CPU, CPU sets, so the new C group uh, way of doing that. CPU pinning for the VM, priority scheduling, like FIFO scheduling with uh, different priorities. We, we use a lot of the control groups and uh, everything Linux has to offer to, to, to make uh, isolation better, basically. On the virtualization side, We've been talking a lot about Xen uh, in this, uh, in this uh, conference. Uh, we have chosen KVM at the time uh, of the choice. Uh, KVM had a better um, uh, reputation for low latency, or oh, with preempt RT anyway. Uh, KVM was supposed to be better, better than, than Xen. Uh, and we chose VM over container, like Orient said, because of mainly the, the multi-vendor constraints. 
we need to have different vendors running uh, applications on this cluster. Uh, VM makes it, makes it very easy. Uh, we have a, a shared responsibility model. If it's in the VM, it's your problem. If it's not in the VM, it's our problem. Uh, it's, it, it's more versatile. If you want to provide a function running Windows, you can. <laughs> if it's a container, it would be a, a bit different. Uh, it's easier for resource management. It's very easy to, to, to give a CPU to a VM and to increase this number because you need a, a CPU, uh, uh, one, one more CPU for, uh, for the VM. So basically, right now, uh, using only containerization was not an option, and VM made, made things uh, very, very easy. And the second thing we noted with uh, virtualization, and that's the meat of the project. I mean, people are doing virtualization. On, many people are doing virtualization. Everybody is doing that. And many people are doing pre-M30. Uh, doing pre-M30 with virtualization is still kind of new. Uh, KVMRT is still kind of something uh, not seen uh, very much. Uh, we noticed it being getting traction. For instance, we are, will be uh, next month in Prague. And uh, we've, we've noticed there is a, this conference. Uh, so we see other people investigating pre 30 in the virtualized environment. So, so we think we, will be, we believe in it, and we think we're on, a, on the right way to, 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 to work on it. About resilience, once again, we are not developing anything. We are using CoreSync and Pacemaker, and they can do a very, uh, very nice clusters. We are using Ceph as a second uh, layer for the storage. And uh, on the network side, we also uh, support PRP, uh, which in our uh, electric grid environment is uh, almost a norm. Uh, that is to be, sh if you don't know PRP, uh, basically every packet is duplicated on the network. They can use uh, different, uh, different uh, ways. Uh, and in the end, it's uh, deduplicated. So even if there is uh, any uh, kind of problem, you won't lose a packet. So it, it, it can be implemented in hardware, so you can by a hardware card that already uh, implement the, the PRP on the hardware level. So this is something we had, we had to, to support in CPaaS. Uh, before going into IT stuff, uh, networking, we, there, there is two types of networking in CPaaS. Uh, the, the first networking uh, feature is the VM. When you implement a, a full uh, system with different VM that needs to talk to each other, uh, you, you need to have a, a, a very versatile um, networking stack. OpenVSwitch provides this. You can create bridge, you can plug the VM, you can add firewalls if you want, and you can redesign, uh, like do, do software design, uh, software-defined network in your hypervisors, you can use, you can use VXLAN, VXLAN, so that you can even extend uh, virtual bridges from one hypervisor to another. So basically, we can do everything we need uh, with uh, open the switch. It's very nice. And this is, once again, for the communi VM communications. But when the VM needs to, uh, needs to exchange data with uh, the external, <laughs> with the exter external world, uh, then we uh, support SRIOV, which uh, allows uh, a VM to, uh, to have very good performance on, on hardware, uh, network, uh, on network hardware, uh, because it's uh, bypassing the, the, the hypervisor. And uh, basically, you, the VM can have access to the NIC uh, with, with, no, with no overhead. So this is something we, we support, and we think it's the, it's, it's the we, we tried different things. We also tried DPDK, for instance. Uh, in, in the end, for the external communication, we think uh, SRIOV will be, uh, will be the target. Uh, PTP, uh, like Orion said, uh, in the electric grid, but it, it may be somewhere else, in, the, in our world, um, everything needs to be synchronized with PTP, so pre pre precision time protocol. Um, our way uh, for uh, oh, so this is a standard way of uh, using PTP in a in a substation. Uh, there is a whole uh, architecture, a whole uh, way of doing that. You can have uh, uh, transparent clocks and boundary clocks and and GPS and everything. Um, the idea when you virtualize, it's. Uh, um, it's kind of different because the norm, like it's, it's been written, has been, has been designed for hardware. So the hardware is supposed to be synchronized with PTP. When, this, when it's in a VM, you can't, or at least it's not optimal anymore, to synchronize every VM in PTP. So the, the architecture we chose to implement 
is to use Linux PTP, of course, but to synchronize the host, the hypervisor with PTP. We don't synchronize the VM. And then we use PTP KVM, another way of doing that, to synchronize the guest with the host. So we never synchronize the guest directly in PTP, but we are confident enough that, we, uh, that uh, the guest uh, will be uh, synchronized very precisely. Okay. Once again, enough for uh, our use case. So how do we deploy that? So for the people who were just before, we had a nice presentation on Yocto. Uh, Yocto was the first approach we, we chose uh, because we were in this uh, industrial environment and built environment. Uh, Yocto has many advantages, the editability, the reproduci reproducible builds, uh, the, the, the SBOM, the, the, yeah, the features, it, it can help you for the SBOM problematic. A minimal footprint, you can design a very small system with a very limited footprint. Uh, in our context, since we are using m m a lot of software, and anyway, we need to configure it to create clusters and everything, uh, Yocto wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, required anymore. Uh, we are not creating, for instance, we are not using images because uh, uh, if we have uh, three machines, for instance, they are all different. They're not using the same image. We need to, to run a playbook, an Ansible playbook. We need to exchange keys. We need to configure the cluster. So since we need to configure the cluster with Ansible, uh, we ask ourselves the question, if, if we need to configure the machine, uh, why don't we use the standard distribution and then configure everything with Ansible? And that's the second way we worked on, which is the Debian approach. So basically now, we are creating a basic installation media with an FAI project, which is a very nice uh, way to create your Debian uh, ISO uh, software. Uh, we only do basic customization on this image. So we basically, we, de we deploy de uh, a Debian system. The only thing we do with the FAI is that we, uh, we take all the software we need in the installation media, for instance, the Ceph, uh, Open vSwitch, and everything. And so we can uh, deploy the machine with no internet connection. So we create our USB key, for instance, with all the software we need, and we can deploy uh, all of our CPaaS uh, machine with, ones, uh, with one USB key and no internet connection. Once we have done that, basically we have a hardware running Debian, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's, not, it's not much. Everything else, everything else is done using Ansible and Playbooks. So we connect to the machine, and then we do everything we have to do. We do all the prerequisites, we configure the system, we do the cybersecurity, we create the clusters and everything. So this is the Debian approach. Just so you know, uh, on the CPaaS project, both branches are still maintained and uh, exist. So, so yeah, customers who prefer Yocto can use the Yocto branch, and those who are willing to switch to Debian can also use the Debian branch. I myself, is, are work, I'm working on the Debian branch, so I know the Debian branch a little bit more. <laughs> and what was that? Yeah, cybersecurity. So yeah, <laughs> this conference is a lot about cybersecurity. So how do, how do we manage cybersecurity in this project? So basically, since we are uh, running a standard Linux system with a standard uh, uh, IT, uh, uh, IT software like uh, clustering and everything. Uh, basically, we use the, the ANSI, which is a French uh, cyber security agency, and they have this guide, which is configuration recommendation of a Linux system, uh, which is uh, 70 pages of best practices on how to secure your uh, Linux system. So basically, we implemented that, and once again, we implemented that with uh, Ansible. So you can run the playbook, and it will uh, harden your system. You can run a rollback playbook, and it will harden your system. And it's very easy to update, to add a rule, uh, or to uh, use to, to, to do uh, compliance. Is my system st still uh, like uh, I deployed it? I rerun the playbook, uh, and then uh, I know Ansible tells me if everything uh, is still as before or if is st some things uh, have changed. Um, the other way on the Debian branch we have for cybersecurity security is to basically delegate a lot of work to the Debian community. Uh, when you install Debian, you know your system is updated, you know you can uh, uh, do updates. <laughs> yeah. And uh, basically this is not a CPaaS project problem anymore. We still ha we just have to provide a way to update the system. But uh, if there is a patch to be, to be installed, then uh, APT update. And, uh, and, uh, and, and it's working. So we found that it was a bit uh, more, a bit easier than Yocto. <laughs> Yocto is to, 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 to install a patch is, is a, 
um, a lot more complicated. You have to rebuild the image and then to deploy the image and then to switch. And uh, you have to have rollback processes. And uh, yeah, it, it, we think it's, uh, it's also in the, in the interest of cybersecurity to move to Debian. So now our titling. Because it's more than a POC, we just, it's not just an R&D project where we want to try things and, and make them work. Uh, we, just so you know, RT is, he will be using CPAS in production uh, uh, in a few months. Uh, so we, have, we had to integrate it in uh, our, our, uh, our environment. And so we have to, pro we have to provide uh, non-embedded uh, solution, like for instance, how do you back up to your VM? Uh, how do you, uh, how do you uh, export your logs? Uh, how do you check the CPU if it's running uh, at 100%? Uh, the administration, how to, you, how to do, I don't know, cybersecurity profiles or whatever. So everything we call IT tooling, that is things that IT needs when, we, when they need to, uh, to administrate and, uh, and, uh, the, the system. And so I'm going to show you uh, in a few slides uh, what, we, what we did for IT tooling. First thing is uh, implement SNMP, which is a standard uh, monitoring protocol. So like, like, you said, like you see, we have uh, many uh, indicators. We know the load, the ping, the, 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 the temperatures, the, the, the interface status, the disk, the NTP status, whatever. And uh, basically, when, we, when you deploy a CPAS cluster, it's very easy to pull the, N, the SNMP status and to recover to know of any alerts, for instance, if a VM has crashed, uh, is, uh, if, uh, if the hypervisor is not uh, uh, synchroni synchronized anymore. So this is the first thing. Second thing in logs is logs. We are able to export our logs to any uh, log uh, greater. For instance, this is Elastic. You can use Splunk. You could use a, a standard syslog server. So exporting your log is also something that we had to implement to, <laughs> to make our system uh, acceptable. <laughs> Uh, VM backup, very useful. Uh, it can be, uh, yeah, we, we can imagine in situation in which you upgrade a VM, uh, it goes wrong. How do you roll back? How do you export your backup offsite? So once again, we developed uh, on the CPAS project many tools to be able to do this VM backup, to provide the service and to restore VM. We've used this a lot in development, for instance, when we want to clone a, uh, to clone a cluster, we back up we, we back up all the VM and we restore them on another cluster. Works like a charm. For this bomb uh, problematic, since once again we wanted to be able to provide uh, what's running, or for, what, are our, our, what are our dependencies on other software. Since we're using Debian, it's pretty easy. <laughs> DPKG can list every, every package you have in the system and all the version. And with this, uh, this is implementation that, uh, once again, we didn't uh, code, <laughs> we used it, it exists. Uh, it's very easy to have a list of all the packages you use, all the software, all the version, and all the licenses you use. So it's a first step toward uh, SBOM. <laughs> it's not enough, but... Yeah, the project is young, so yeah, it's, it's a very young project. We've been uh, migrating to Debian uh, not even a year ago, so it's a very young project. So we are trying to, to go in all directions and to solve all problems at once. We know we are, we're not done, but we, we want to code first and then uh, solicit the community, you for instance, to help us finish or change things or add stuff. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the idea of our presence here also. Uh, we also developed uh, many tools for VM management because when, when, when you want to create a VM, move a VM, stop a VM, duplicate a VM, clone, create a snapshot, everything. So uh, we developed tools to make it easy so that you don't have to go uh, uh, SSH on the, on the server and run a pacemaker or a libvirt, uh, libvirt uh, commands. Yeah, so once again, to make it more easy to onboard the project. So yeah, I, I hope I uh, gave you a, a sense of all the technologies that are used. Uh, once again, it's not a product, it's, it's, uh, it's more of an integration of everything. But the idea is that you can deploy, so now you understand, you, you take your USB key, you deploy uh, Debian on the server, you run a few playbooks and your cluster is up and, up and running and can run a, a low latency VM. Okay, thank you, Florent. So as we said before, uh, this project is going to be used in production. And uh, for a control and command system, we have protection that are critical application. So of course, we need validation strategies. 
and uh, it's uh, basically it's based on uh, continuous integration and uh, on continuous testing. So if you can. Sorry. Uh, so we use the same approach as before, so as a test as code. So basically, as uh, Florent told you before, everything is based on Ansible and Playbooks. So we are phase on uh, automation, continuous testing and Playbook for the testing process. So for example, if you want to test one security requirement, you will add the security uh, with an Ansible Playbook and you will test the security with a test that is launched with an Ansible playbook as well. And uh, as uh, it is uh, an embedded uh, project, you need to test directly on the targets. So the approach is when you do the continuous integration, you deploy your code, you deploy everything each time on the target. So, uh, so there are two levels of testing. The first one is, I would say, Linux oriented. Uh, so we don't on phase on the on the on the command and control. We just on phase on the on the Linux platform. So for this, each time there is a pull request on the project, we reinstall uh, CPath on the real cluster in our laboratory. Uh, we and then we we have uh, maybe today uh, two thousand tests that are run each time, and each time there is a new functionality we add new test. And we generate a test report to assess for changes. And uh, this way, we ensure the, the reliability and, uh, and the performance of the platform. So uh, with this intensive testing, we, we are going to test, like I say, cyber security. You, you, there are tests regarding the cluster features. There are tests regarding the, the latencies. Uh, so yeah, we, we, we try to test each items and, uh, and uh, if you have any ideas regarding those tests, feel free to contact us. We can uh, add tests uh, add test to this. And the second layer is, uh, is the what I call the factory acceptance test approach. So in this, uh, we use a, a very common approach that we use in a, for command and control, what we call HIL, so hardware in the loop. So we have simulator, real-time simulator, that will simulate the high-voltage uh, network, so like the, the, the production, the solar panel, or whatever. And uh, so we will connect our system uh, to this uh, simulator. And the system will think, OK, it's like I'm in the field. I'm connected to a real, uh, real uh, high-voltage equipment. Uh, and so, in this, and then we can test uh, its behavior. So basically, uh, the test that we can do is uh, uh, simulate a fault on a line and see whether the system reacts at the at the right speed. And uh, and, uh, and then, with this kind of environment that we also call sometimes digital twins, you can you can test all the you can test uh, the loss of uh, of, uh, for example, synchronization, the loss of the of the clock, uh, any um, anything that you want, and with this, those two layers of tests, uh, I think we 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 get a good base for to have a good coverage for for the for this approach. So what next? Uh, as you, as we said before, uh, CPath is um, an open source project, and uh, if we want to, what we what we realize is uh, most of the people from the control and command are not specialists in Linux. That's not their business. What they want is a product uh, that they can use and build their control and command on top of that. So the first thing that we'll do is encourage, for example, as RT, uh, we we do our part. We did our part in the research and development, but that's not our business. Our business is to uh, run a substation. Uh, so we will encourage companies to provide uh, support on CPAS uh, to the, the 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 
target is to have a subscription model and then we subscribe to it and then uh, and then uh, we can uh, we can have our services uh, the second point in enhancing the factory uh, fact approach for knowledge sharing and assisting utilities and vendors so the idea is to we have the chance to have a very very nice labs and uh, i would say lots of history so lots of tests so with virtualization it's pretty easy to rerun tests and test and test and i think that's the only way to uh, to for everybody to accept virtualization the only way to do it is to run dozens of tests to have the system to run for one month one year two years without interruption on those platform and to show that it's reliable so basically more and more testing uh, as i said cpas is not an end project it's a way to build your platform so we need input on uh, resilience, critical. Uh, uh, what what is your approach on building uh, your infrastructure? Uh, are you using main A, main B uh, approach, application level failover, other ideas? Because the idea of the project is to integrate all those features. Then after you can do your own integration. If I, if I, if I may add. The thing is, there is an architecture um, issue that we haven't solved yet. Um, the resilience that we use, uh, for, for instance, Pacemaker and, and CoreSync, uh, um, if a VM crashes or if an hypervisor crashes, uh, then Pacemaker will say, OK, I need to restart the VMs on the one that is not, not crashed. Fine. But it will, it will take like 30 seconds to restart a VM. So when, on one side, we host critical VMs and they have to, uh, re to react in a, a, a few microseconds. And on the other side, if an IP is a crash, it would take 30, sec 30 seconds to restart the VM. That is not compatible. So uh, the way we do uh, is to split the VM into two, in, in two categories. Either they, they are not critical, uh, SCADA, for instance, technically it's not critical. If, we, if you lose observability for, for 30 seconds, it's, it's, not, it's not, yeah, that's, that's not a big problem. So this one, you can, you can just use the standard resilience, have only one VM. If it crashes, it moves, you lose 30 seconds, no big deal. But for protection, for instance, you can't lose the protection for 30 seconds. So what we use is a, a main A, main B. So we have two VMs, basically. Two VMs running on, on two hypervisors. And see if one crashes, then it, the, the VM that has crashed will always start on the hypervisor 3, for instance. But you will still have the main B running. And so you will, you will, you will, it, it won't be a problem. The thing is, um, in, in that case, uh, the resilience is just uh, a nice to have way to reduce uh, uh, your uh, uh, degraded mode time. And, and so we're soliciting the community <laughs> in that case to say, how would you do it? How, how would you uh, implement resilience of a critical function? Because technically, uh, pacemaker is not good enough. We thought about main A, main B. We thought about an application level failover, for instance. There might be other ideas. And you, maybe you want to try, you want to explain. Yeah, that, that's, uh, yeah that, that's how we work. Maybe you want to say some, some word about it, about this. I think you, you did it pretty well. Basically, uh, uh, we are also stuck with the architecture of uh, command and control. Uh, basically, you cannot put two SCADA at the same time because the rest of the architecture will not support it. Uh, so you have to have only one SCADA running at a time. Uh, however, for protection, since it, it, it was a critical application for since the beginning, the architecture is made to be able to have two uh, protection in parallel at the same time. So, so yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we are welcoming ideas. <laughs> uh, a few words about the project uh, before. Uh we we'll move to question if you have any. Uh, yeah, so it's, a, it's an active project. We are many, many not, not many, we are several companies working on it. We have a website, of course. We have a, a wiki. Uh, we have a GitHub with many repositories. We have a Slack channel. Uh, so basically, yeah, come talk with us. <laughs> uh, we're always there. 
And uh, just so you know our planning, right now we're in Vancouver, next month we'll be in Paris at the beginning of, uh, of June, we'll be in Prague at the end of June. So yeah, like you say, uh, as you can see, it's a, it's a project that is going uh, very, very active. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and if you have any questions, of, of course, uh, we're there for still a few minutes. <laughs> Yeah. Let me bring it back. Yeah. I'm just curious, uh, so you're doing VMs, why Docker's up there? Like what role it plays? Sorry, I do VM what? On your computer integration, do you have Docker up there? Sure. Oh yeah, Docker, it's, it's more like for the CI. Okay. Uh, yeah, we are running. Uh, when we have to build, uh, when we have to run Ansible to deploy the cluster, for instance, uh, the GitHub action is, is uh, building a, 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 it's a continuous integration image. It's, it's building the image because it needs Ansible and it needs all the playbooks and everything, and then it runs the cluster. And so that's, that's why it's, uh, it's, it's throwable. <laughs> it's just for the CI or for the test, and then we throw it away. So Docker is very nice for that. To complete on that, uh, that we say that the VM is the con it's basically the container, but inside the VM, most of the time you have container. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, so yeah, the VM there. Yeah, what is it? This is a vendor, for instance. If a vendor wants to provide a protection, if it wants to, it can provide, a, like I said, a, any OS. We don't look into it. But often, what we imagine is that one vendor will provide several protection, one network stack, and usually it will it, it will provide a VM. But in the VM, it will be many net, uh, containers running. Uh, so yeah, we we encourage uh, vendors or providers of VM to use Docker because it's it's very it's it's more easy to do upgrades. Uh, I am curious, how is the name CPATH ch chosen? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> like I said, no, it's, a, it's an acronym. Uh, what does it stand for? I was just like I say, I'm, I'm curious. What's, okay. what's the acronym for? Uh, I, did, I didn't choose it. Uh, you didn't choose it? <laughs> anyone, anyone remembers? I don't know. Uh, it's within. Uh, yeah, yeah, tell me that. We don't use it much, and yeah, it might be a little stretched. <laughs> it might be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other question? What is your uh, observed drift with PTP KVM, and uh, what is your tolerance for that? And what actions would you take if it drifts too far out on the uh, constituent VMs? Um. I'm not sure we observe a drift because uh, since PTP is working all the time, it's, it's always synchronizing. So, if if, if it is, it's, it's uh, uh, the order of the order uh, is a, a, a dozen na nanoseconds. That kind of that kind of uh, that kind of, uh, that kind of, of delay. Um, if if I may add something, uh, basically, if you if you do the PTP synchronization directly in the VM with the network, you won't have hard time stamping. So basically yeah. the precision that you get is lower than the one that you get directly with the host. And, and yeah, it's, it's not even compatible with SRIOV. Yeah. I mean, if you use SRIOV, uh, hard stamping is not an option. So you, you can't do uh, hardware, uh, hardware time stamping with SRIOV, so you won't be able to, to do, to do uh, pro proper PTP. And PTP KVM, you're on the host, and uh, it's an, uh, a KVM hypercall, so it's, it's, it's very, there is no delay, so. And what's my, what is our um, tolerance, you asked? Uh, well, we try to respect the norm, so we, we, don't, we didn't talk about, about it a lot, but there is a, a norm that governs uh, what we try to do on the substation, it's called IEC 61850. <laughs> and IEC 61850 the, has a, a PTP profile, and they, the norm tells you what they expect for PTP configuration. <laughs> well, then thank you, everybody, and uh, have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs>